Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Horn. Thanks for joining me today on Equipping the Saints. And um, I tell you, I have some more revelation. I'm going to build on last week's uh, message. If you missed it, let me encourage you. Go onto our website, check it out. And I have some really empowering revelation there. And also, we're going into some new things today. In fact, I'm going to call today's message Taking Territory. Please hear that word. It's time for the sons of God to take some territory. And this is what the Lord is, is doing. He's calling forth the sons of God. He's calling us uh, you know, into alignment with his kingdom. And uh, I believe that the Lord has us on this path, so to speak, uh, you know, where he's leading us out of the world. He's leading us into our promised land, into the kingdom of heavens. He wants us to live from heaven towards earth and establish the kingdom of God here on this planet. And I tell you what, he has all the wherewithal to bring it forth and to bring you forth and to bring you into miracles and so many things that's revealed in scripture. They're all yes and amen. Oh, man. And so last week we were just touching on a few things, really just kind of laying the, the groundwork for our ministry uh, to, to expand. And that's what we need. We need a greater revelation of our priesthood in Jesus so that we can, we can be empowered here to go forth, to follow him. And so I'm camping out again a little bit today. And that's what the, the Lord did with the nation of Israel. When, when Joshua was leading them through the, the desert, they would camp out and they would wait until God's time. And please hear me, God's season for calling you forth is, is coming quickly and he wants us to be ready to move. And we got to be in position to see him. And I'll say it that way. And uh, this, is, this is a huge thing. And so I just want to encourage people today. Um, you know, just as the Lord, please hear this. Just as the Lord was with Joshua and the nation of Israel when they were going through the promised land, when they crossed over the Jordan, you know, what he, you can cross over cross through the veil of your flesh, cross over into the ministry of the Holy Spirit, into the power of the Lord's baptism. In fact, that's what the Lord is, is, is telling me. This is a season of open doors. There's doors that are about to open to the body of Christ like never before. He's calling forth the sons. And, and what we can't afford to do, please hear me, is we cannot afford to allow any thought, any influence, any evil speaking to keep us from entering into our promised land, the kingdom of God, into the promises of God. And so many people aren't entering in because they have uh, been influenced by, by tradition, religious tradition. I mean, just as there were Pharisees in, in, in Jesus' day, there's Pharisees today. And the Lord is trying to break us through those things that are hindering us from advancing and moving into a kingdom lifestyle. I'll say it that way. And so this is a season of open doors. Please hear that word. And, and to open these doors and to go through these doors, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. Please hear that. Many people don't step through the door because they don't know they can. I'm, and I'm trying to encourage you here today that you can because Jesus Christ he came and he paid the price. He made a way for you. He's a forerunner and his ministry is after the order of Melchizedek. And by his blood, he made a way for you to go through. And when you have that revelation, there's nothing that can stop you from doing what God has called you to do because you're not going alone because God's going with you. He's going before you. He's dealing with your enemies. He's, he's making a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And this is a big deal. Let's go look at a couple of verses. Now, it says in Scripture, in, and I want to pick up here. I think I, I left off last week touching on this. This is in Hebrews chapter 6. And, and again, I just want to reinforce the validity of the promise that we have in our Lord. It says, uh, verse 13, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And then, so after, when he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. 
That's a revelation. And, uh, you know, if that was a way for Abraham, if that was a way for Jesus, if that was a way for other people, Paul and others in Scripture, it's going to be the way for you. But the good news is, is, is the promise has already been given. And that's a revelation. And, uh, oh, man, I hope that this is encouraging you. It says down in verse 20, it says, Whether the forerunner is for us, he entered in. He entered. Jesus entered into something. He went through the the veil of the flesh for you and and he made he was made a high priest forever after the order of melchizedek this is just a, a huge revelation and again by his blood he's washed us he's made us kings and priests and uh, and i tell you you need the revelation of grace to 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 walk in your kingship and there's something about the authority that comes through the revelation of jesus that brings his power in operation in your life. I'll say it that way. And so let's just go look at a couple more verses here. And, uh, and I tell you, I got so many things here I want to get into concerning this. Um, I think one highlight from last week was childlike faith. That's something that I wanted to build on as well this week. You know, what's keeping us from seeing the kingdom of God? You know, when Jesus started walking the earth, you know, you know, he was a fulfillment of, of what all those Old Testament uh, types and shadows were pointing to, and when he crossed that Jordan, he made a way for you and me, and we were buried in his baptism, and we can walk in his resurrection. Please hear that word, and I tell you, he caught the attention of people when he was on this planet, and uh, next week I'm really going to get into the gifts of healing. Oh man, I'm I'm stirred up about that, but. But one thing that he, he said to Nicodemus was so important concerning seeing the kingdom. Unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom. Unless you're born of the water and the spirit. I know we've, we've maybe heard that over and over and over. But, uh, but for whatever reason, how many are entering through that door? Entering into that, that heavenly reality, so to speak. I mean, God has things laid up for you and for me. But if we don't enter into them, how are we ever going to see them? If we just keep living and doing the same old, same old, how, how many know you're not probably going to be expecting things? You know, there's a new day. There's a new way, a living way, and it's in Jesus. And we've got to step through these doors. We've got to step through. And there's a way to do that. And so many people have been just, um, you know, sidelined because of the influence of other people influence of religion, influence of what people that should be representing the truth are saying to them that are misrepresenting the truth. And the Lord has a truth. He has a way for you. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you could just get a revelation of the light of the knowledge of his glory that comes toward us from the face of Jesus, it will transform you. I'll just say it that way. And that's just the truth. And so the Lord spoke uh, that to Nicodemus, and he said, concerning the children of God, they are to be even like the wind. And, and then I started thinking about that. And so, Lord, I need some scriptures maybe to, to help encourage people to see and to enter into the kingdom. So real quick here, I want to hit this, and I want to go a little, a little further today. Um, hallelujah. And so Jesus started sharing some revelation on how to enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 15 says, Verily I say to you, whosoever, please hear that word, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. That is the words of Jesus. That's red letters right there. Here's another verse, uh, Matthew 18, 3. He said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God. And so here's the simple truth. If we don't walk in the kingdom of God, we're not walking in liberty. And, and not living by faith, it'll put you in a destructive thought pattern. It'll put you into a cycle. Just a, a few months ago, I preached on, on cycles, you know, breaking through those cycles of the flesh, cycles of the world. The enemy, he'll put you in a religious tradition. He'll put you in, in something that uh, doesn't require you to break through or to do those things that Jesus created you to do. 
But there is a way to break through the cycle. And I'm telling you what, I'm not talking about religious works. I'm not talking about people working things up after the flesh and stirring you up in the flesh. I'm talking about the work, the operation of God. And that is just a, that's just a simple truth. And please hear this word. You know, the manifestation of, of miracles, of the truth. You know, this is an operation of God. And the operation of God manifests through the voice of the Son of God. When we give voice to the Word of God, when we come into our ministry, our position in the body of Christ, it brings forth this great operation of God. And that operation is love. God is love. Nothing avails anything, it says in Scripture, except faith that works by love or operates by love. And God has chosen you. He's chosen me to operate through, to bring a revelation of the kingdom that will bring transformation, bring his kingdom into manifestation here on earth. And this is an exciting thing, and this is what we're going to see more of. And he's calling forth that greater reality in you. It's just who's willing to believe, who's willing to step through the veil of the flesh. Please hear me. Did we really believe that he died on the cross for us? Do we really believe we have access into this grace where we can stand I'm telling you, we can. And so let me just give you another revelation that I'm going to get into something. Jesus said this in John 5.30. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. Please hear that only as he heard did he make a decision. Did he have that, that revelation of what God was calling him into. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And so there it is. We have to we have to enter out, we have to leave our ways, forsake our ways, let the rain from heaven come down, let the Lord lead us and guide us by his spirit. Please hear me, and he'll lead you right into the will of God. And with the will of God comes the power of God, the creative power of God to work miracles, to bring shift and change into our lives, our circumstances. This is an awesome thing. John 7, 24, he said, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Please hear this word. In the Old Covenant, that word judge or judgment was connected to righteousness. That's the same thing. And this is where your identity comes forth by discerning the will of the Lord. He knows just how to lead you and guide you. Scripture says we go from faith to faith, and therein is the righteousness of God revealed to us. You know, we can't be ashamed of the gospel. We can't let anybody influence us because it's the power of God unto salvation. And when you step into that, you'll see some things. I'm telling you, let me just keep on going here. I'm on a, I'm on a roll here. Hallelujah. Okay, here we are. But I'm going to go back into um, Hebrews here, chapter 6. It says, where God was willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. There's nothing more sure than the word of God. It's impossible for God to lie. Please hear that word. And, and it goes on to say here, which hope we have. We can go through this door. Please hear that, that word. We can go through that circumstance. We can go through our abilities, go through the veil of our flesh. We can rise above the mindset of the carnal mind and the ways of the world into the ways, into the finished works of the Son of God. It says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Please hear me. That is a powerful word, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that which is within the veil. And I'm telling you what, we have to go through that door. I'm going to build on this. And again, our Lord went before us as a forerunner, it says, and he was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And, and so here's a revelation on this that I touched on this last week. I want to touch on it again today. And I'm camping out here because I'm telling you what, there is nothing that, God, that you're facing that's trying to hinder you that you can't press through if you follow uh, the word and the pattern before you. And Jesus, it says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, that though he were a son, please hear that, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. In other words, he, he didn't allow the circumstances to... To hinder him. No, he, he considered uh, the word of the Lord as authority, had created a power, you know. The spirit of love was going to be operating in him, bringing, it, bringing him through as it manifests in his life. 
And it goes on to say he learned those things by which he suffered. So we, if we're going to learn these things and that we are more than a conqueror through Jesus, we're going to have to press through. We're going to have to believe through our, per, our problems, our circumstances. We're going to have to rise above the limitations of the carnal mind and make a way for the Son of God to manifest in our life. It says he was made perfect and he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. And I tell you, I believe that the Lord right now is calling forth the sons of God. There's something being birthed. He wants you to not be satisfied with religion that doesn't require you to live by faith. He wants you to step through the door, break through those gates. I'm telling you what, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, this is part of the reason why he was anointed. And let's go look at that Isaiah 61. Here it is. Isaiah 61, Here, here's what the, the Word of God says. Verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's upon you too. Hallelujah. If you have Jesus in you, if you've been baptized in the Spirit, you can walk in this as well because it's not you, it's Jesus in you. Hallelujah. It's who you are in Christ. It says that because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, he has sent me. Hear that word. Jesus was sent to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And this is a revelation. So many people, you know, we, we pray for all kinds of circumstances and people. We see people getting set free. And sometimes I see people, they come out of it, even though the anointing broke the yoke. I tell you, there is a breaker anointing that's being released right here today. Even though the anointing breaks the yoke, sets them free, Many still don't come out. They're afraid of something new. You know, we can't live in the past if we want to walk in the light. We've got to walk in the light as he is in the light. We have to follow after him and don't remain in the darkness. It says, I'm the light of the world, Jesus said, John 8, 12. If you follow me, you shall not walk in darkness, but you shall have the light of life. But how many are willing to believe the Lord to step through that door and, and break free? through those barriers that are hindering you, that are robbing you, that are, are, are giving the wrong witness to people around you, I'm telling you, this is a revelation we're, 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 we're touching on lightly today. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah. So the anointing, he was anointed to preach the gospel. It says in Acts 10, 38, when our Lord came off that mountain after being uh, you know, driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested or tempted of the Lord, of, of the devil, excuse me, uh, you know, that he came off that mountain, you know. How did, he, how did he overcome the enemy? Please hear this. He said, devil, it is written. You know, man shall not live by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It made a way for him to come out in a supernatural strength, please hear this, he was fasting for 40 days and he came off that mountain in the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is a revelation. And so I want to encourage you, when you step into what I'm talking about, when you try, many people have, have maybe tasted to see that the Lord is gracious, that the Lord is good. Don't stop, there's so much more. And, and this, is, this is a revelation that, uh, that I've, I've been living in. You know, when you try to do things by faith, there's always things trying to stop you. Please hear me. There's always some force out there, some circumstance, something inside you, you know, your own mindset trying to hinder you. And, and the only way that I, I see that makes a way for me to go is I have to, I got to hear. I can't, I can't go by, by uh, you know, by what I see in the temporal realm. No, I have to see it first in my spirit. I know the Word of God the Word of God, you know, the entrance of the Word of God gives light. And if I'll just believe it in my spirit, it makes a way for the power, the creative power of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost to bring forth the Word of God, to bring forth Jesus into life and my life. And it roots me and it grounds me in love where this operation starts to operate. And I have to confess it. I have to, I have to consider, first and foremost, the Apostle and high priest of my profession, and it makes a way for me to go. And I tell you what, when I'm going in the, in, the, in the liberty of the Spirit, the enemy gets out of the way. And that's what he's calling us all to. He's calling us to step through the door, to take back ground, to take 
territory. And this is what the Lord is doing in this hour. And so I hope that this is encouraging you here today. There is so much more that I'm going to get into. Um, and I want to encourage you, if, if you are if you're watching today, to just believe, simply believe it. You know, um, like a child, you know. We're not to... We're not to think more highly than, the, than the, the faith, the measure of faith that God gives us, whether it's prophecy or work or ministration, whatever he's calling us to do, just do it with simplicity. And the Spirit works through that. And please hear this. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could imagine or think. But it's through the power that operates, that works through us. And this is what he's bringing the church into. So he's calling forth the sons of God. And I hope that this is stirring you today. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior right there, let's just stop right here and just pray. Just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my life. Save me. I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead on the third day. And I'll tell you what, don't let him uh, just be your Savior. Make him your Lord. Follow after him. And that is the, the truth. You know, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. They shall be delivered. He'll deliver you through everything you're going through. And if you have a sickness right now or some kind of a circumstance, just yield it to the Lord. Give it to the Holy Spirit right now. Lord, I just thank you. We yield our problems, our circumstances to your anointing that breaks the yoke. We exalt your word, Lord. Isaiah 10, 27, above every circumstance. I thank you, Lord. You create the fruit of my lips. That right now as I speak, the anointing is breaking complacency is breaking us into new territory making a way for us to go from faith to faith lord i thank you for your anointing that breaks the the spiritual oppression i curse every sickness every disease everything that's that's trying to root into people's lives that are not of you at the root we command them to dry up and be cast out and planted in the sea in the name of jesus and i release healing health restoration favor in the name of jesus I tell you, there, there's power in that word. Scripture says he creates the fruit of our lips. If you'll just receive it and live in it, you'll see an operation. Next week, I'm going to go and, and teach on the gifts of healing. I want to encourage you. I have some real revelation, some things I've never heard anybody preach on. I'm going to share next week on this broadcast. And so I pray that this has blessed you today. If this has blessed you, and you want to partner with us and help us to equip the saints, I, I pray a blessing on all offerings. Or if you just want to sow a seed, I thank you for that, Lord. If you want to partner with us, you know, just the information's on the screen. And please stay tuned. I have some upcoming um, uh, events here in the near future. I hope you can make one of them. Thank you for watching. May the Lord richly bless you. Okay, everybody, I just want to just uh, put the word out really quick here. Uh, this coming Saturday, that would be November 11th in Modesto, we're having a men's breakfast. We're calling it Calling Forth the Sons. And please hear me, we're going to have special speakers. I'm going to be there speaking, and there's going to be another uh, gentleman named Russell Ingram speaking. Men, you will be encouraged. It's a breakfast meeting. Come as our guest and, uh, and just be blessed. And then again, that's this Saturday, uh, November 11th at 10 a.m., and then we're going to have a, a kingdom meeting. We call them kingdom meetings where we go into the marketplace. This is in Angel's Camp. We're, we're going to take some kingdom territory in Angel's Camp. And this is going to be November 14th, 12 o'clock. Let me encourage you. People are from all walks of life are discovering the reality of Jesus through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we're believing for a move of the Lord there in Angel's Camp. This is up in the Mother Love, right on the corner of Highway 49 and Highway 4, 12 o'clock. And it's at Round Table Pizza. They have a really nice banquet room there. And so we hope to see you there. Then also we're going back into Jackson for another miracle service. And we're going to go um, in December, on the 9th of December, and we're calling this I Believe in Miracles. Last time we went, uh, a month or so ago, there was such a presence, a glory of the Lord is manifesting. People were blessed. We saw the miraculous gifts, signs, and wonders, and we're believing for more. And this is at 6 p.m. 
the December um, 9th, Denny's Banquet Hall, and this is on Highway 49, right in Jackson. Hope you can make these. May the Lord bless you. Right here in this room. How many were here Wednesday night? All right. Okay, let's see. Okay, Kim, come and tell everybody what happened. Come and tell people what happened when you when you came up. And so the Lord is saying, you know, um, I want you to do this as a prophetic act. And there was a young lady that was here. She's not here today. And we, we grabbed her by the hand, didn't grab her, but led her by the hand. And she was taking a prophetic walk yes. into, come on in. What happened to you? Into the river. Jesus was holding her hand. It wasn't me. The Lord is leading right. us. We were just being obedient. And there was something that happened to you. Well, I just felt his weighty presence. And he was just... I don't know, but I got breakthrough from it. It was like something shifted, yeah. and I was just walking with Jesus. Yeah, you felt right when we, you started walking. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I could barely Did move. anybody else have that awesome. too? It was like wading through water, like deep waters, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's taking us into deeper waters. Yeah. And so I just like to the other people share, you know? And, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There he is. There's a spirit of the Lord. refreshing 